I'm going to use Azure's container app jobs to run my scheduled tasks. So creating such a job is pretty straightforward. You just go to the Azure portal and create a new container apps job. But to have it actually run your background worker service code, that gets a little more complicated. So I'll guide you through that. But first I'll be working with my brand website project, which includes a brand worker which is a background worker service containing multiple workers so multiple hosted services executing multiple tasks but on a different schedule so one will be running on every 24 hours and another one should run every five minutes if you want to follow along or you're not familiar with the brand website project you can get yourself a copy at kisscode.com slash product or on patreon kiss stupid shop so currently this background work service is deployed on an azure app service but this service isn't really meant for non-web based projects since an azure app service if it doesn't receive any activity trigger request uh, any form of ping then it's going to idle after 10 minutes so it's going to go in some kind of sleep mode and it can only get reactivated by an external trigger that is not the nature of a out-of-the-box background work service so how i had to hack my way around it is to convert this application from a worker to a web application and also use the web sdk instead of the worker then I had to add any endpoint that could be pinged to check for a running or a healthy status. So I added one health endpoint. And then I'd be running all of these tasks one after another, which is quite risky. So I had to implement really good exception handling. And then I kind of reinvented the wheel inside of each worker i specified the days of the week that i wanted this to execute and i had to make sure that it only ran once every specified time period and i had to make sure it didn't run multiple times that day so i had to save a record database to check that first before executing each run and then I had to time it out for the entire period. So that could be 24 hours or five minutes. But for that, it, the app service needed to be always on, which is quite a waste since these tasks may take only, a, take only one to two more minutes. So this was quite some work to get it right. And it's not that perfect because even if this runs every 24 hours, it's not going to exactly run at 9 a.m. every morning to send out the emails. And Azure Container App Jobs can do exactly that, can run with a simple cron expression every day at 9 a.m., every workday, every weekend day, every five minutes. You, you don't need to be defensively coding to make sure that it doesn't run twice a day or twice within a given period. And you don't need to hack your way around the idling problem of the Azure app service. But if that is really the way you want to uh, run your scheduled tasks with a, on an app service, then you can use my package augustvn.worker, which contains all of these coding mechanisms to make sure to have that cron like behavior. And you can get your own copy of the source code by simply signing up at kisscode.com and you can get the original source code of all of my best NuGet packages. So the easy part is to go to the Azure portal and create a container app jobs. Make sure it's the jobs one, not just the container apps for scheduled tasks. Let's create one. All I need to specify here is the container job name and to set the trigger type, which is going to be scheduled. And then I can enter a cron expression. Let's start for debugging with the uh, default one, which is five minutes. So, so five minutes. And I'm going to give it the name of email subscribers sync. And then next up is the container. If you want to run every 24 hours at 9 a.m., for example, you can simply Google that cron expression like the following and then let's check it out at 
12 a.m. so that's at midnight and simply replace that 0 by a 9 for 9 a.m. but you can just google that okay next up container we're going to select Azure Container Registry but you might as well uh, select Docker Hub you'll need a containerized image of the task the background worker service with the task that you want to run every in this example five minutes so let's build a new image of your code first i'm going to go to the container registries make sure you create uh, a container registry if you don't have one yet and this also contains some of the instructions to push your container image to the azure container registries it may make more sense to have just one container app job for each background worker service task. So I'm going to create a new project, a background worker service, call it email subscribers for the email subscriber synchronization. And it's just going to have one worker task. This time it's just a background worker service, not a web application. Just adding my services, build it. Add the hosted service, which is the worker in this case. And I transformed this worker into an iHosted service instead of a background worker service, since now it doesn't need to keep running. It doesn't need the while loop. It doesn't need the uh, timeout, the delay. It just needs to start, execute, and stop. So you'll get the start async and the stop async by implementing this interface. And then I created a scope and I run my email subscribers sync logic. So that's just yeah, fetching new email addresses and saving them into the correct table. So let's containerize that code and push it to the Azure container registries so we can use that in our select that in our container app job. So I'll add a Docker file to create that containerized image JetBrains Rider IDE supports the option to just say add docker file that's going to be sufficient with a few changes the Visual Studio Code has an uh, extension package and then you can do a similar thing and with Visual Studio you should be able to generate such a file as well and another uh, way would be to use the terminal, go into the correct project in the path and type docker init, which should give you a docker file, docker compose and docker ignore. The docker file is enough for now. I'm going to change this to ASP.NET and I'm going to change the SDK to the spe specific version that I'm using in the globals JSON. I'll open up a terminal, go to that project and build that docker image. So would be docker build dash t tag. I'm going to start by a name. That's what I gave it. Brand website worker email subscribers. And I gave it a tag version of four. Then the which file which docker file to use just this the path to the docker file and let's build that image everything completed so now in docker desktop i should be able to see my new image with the tag of four so once you created that container registry that we did before let's go to push an image to get the instructions it's going to tell me that i have to log into that container registry tag that uh, local docker image with the well, with online namespace and then push it to the container registry so let's do that you need to have the azure cli or the docker cli installed to be able to run these commands of course let me just copy the bottom command and the terminal. Then it's going to ask for a username and password, which you can find under 
access keys. I'm not going to show you that since that's sensitive. Okay, I logged in. The next step is to tag that image. And then after that, we'll push it to the live version. So first tag, let's see, I will use number four and then the online namespace. And then I can just choose a name for that. So I picked the same one, brand website, worker, email subscribers. That's what you may choose. Let's do that and then push. That pushed successfully. So let's head back over to the container jobs. And now I should be able to just select the image, the latest tag. Okay. I'm going to pick the lowest resources and then just review and create. Let's check West Europe managed. Yeah, name is right. Okay, lowest consumption plan. Consumption means it's the serverless setup. Okay, once deployed, let's go to the resource and then we see a side menu with the logs and the execution history is the most important for us now. The configuration is where you could, uh, well, either in the overview or in the configuration, you can change the cron expression. Let's say we want to run every 24 hours, we can use change it there and we can view the execution history there as well. And then the replica timeout is set to 30 minutes. So uh, if the job is going to wait for a success or a successful completion for 30 minutes and otherwise it's if it doesn't get that it's going to just time out after 30 minutes i'm going to set that uh, to you can set that in the configuration so we could change that to 24 hours or at 9 a.m but i'm going to start with just waiting for let's see that's 30 minutes i'm just gonna say like 600 it should be 10 minutes but let's just do five minutes so the since we are running every five minutes well if we'd be timing something out for 30 minutes and the cron expression runs every five minutes then the new versions are going to well the new sessions are going to run before the previous one timed out of course, we don't want a timeout, but it can happen. We can check the logs, so the console logs or the system logs. The system logs are about the containerized uh, well, the container. So uh, let's check that. We'll just see the pod getting created, the image pulled, and container created. Let's check out the console logs, which should be the logs of your application. And that's going to yeah. working start worker starting at yeah, the date and time. It seems to have executed some commands, which is fine. And I assume uh, we're going to get a failure state again. It's for some reason it's just not stopping um, gracefully. It really shouldn't take that long. But anyway, if I ever found uh, the reason why it it's not successfully completing then i'll just add it in the comment section below there's definitely ways we could improve this process by building that docker image i don't want to be doing that manually each time maybe we can use the github workflow the github actions to do that after a git push a code change and then this was a scheduled task we'll definitely also look at the event driven task so for example that shop orders a worker now it's running every five minutes it may be more efficient just to run on a event anyway if you enjoyed this episode do subscribe hit the like button and don't forget to check out gusco.com products for 
awesome code you can reuse and build your own project with or the patreon where you can find even more code see you in the next one